Hey guys, sorry about the gap in uploads. I've actually been in South America. I visited Ecuador, where I went to the Galapagos Islands. And then I did a week in Cusco, Peru. And although this information will tie into the video, this isn't a video about my travels. Although if you are interested in that, maybe I'll link it below. Or maybe you've got to find it yourself. None of this matters. Because in all seriousness, this video is about Shining Path. Also known in Spanish as Sendero Luminoso. Peru's Maoist terrorist organization. I actually first came across them when I was checking the entry requirements for Peru on the UK government website. Of course, at the time, I was like, who on earth are Shining Path? And why do they have such a cute Disney-esque name? And that's exactly what we're gonna find out today. Straight off the bat though, don't let this put you off going to Peru. Shining Path's reign of internal terror has basically ended now anyway. Well, kind of, we'll, we'll touch on this later. But generally the risk is very low and usually condensed to just a few regions. Peru is an absolutely fantastic place and I encourage everyone to visit. I want to go back as soon as I learn more Spanish. It was a dream trip of mine to get to South America and financially I'm paying the price for it now. But boy was it worth it. So, as with any piece of information, we first need to find out the history of Shining Path. Who they are and what they want. Chapter 1. Who the f*** are Shining Path? Shining Path was officially founded in 1970 by Abimel Guzman. Also guys, I'm probably going to pronounce a lot of these words wrong, but you're just going to have to deal with it. Essentially, Shining Path was an offshoot of the Peruvian Communist Party, Red Flag, which itself was an offshoot of the Peruvian Communist Party, which was founded in 1928. Guzman was inspired by a trip he took to China, being heavily influenced by the teachings of Mao Zedong, also known as the infamous Chairman Mao. Mao's own brand of communism and teachings was all put into a little red book, which was used to spur on the Cultural Revolution and promote the Maoist brand. It included quotes such as, we should support whatever the enemy opposes and oppose whatever the enemy supports. Just so you get the vibe. The Shining Path beliefs were also inspired by Marxism and Leninism. If you look on Wikipedia, it states they follow Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism ideologies, which honestly you'll have to Google for yourself because I'm not smart enough to explain the different brands of communism. Honestly guys, I'm no expert by any means, but I'm just trying to break down this information and put it into a video. If you are interested in learning about these communist factions, there's loads of great videos on it though. This isn't a video about communism, but Shining Path. So let's get back into it. The Shining Path first established a foothold at the San Cristobal of Huamanga University in Ayacucho, where Guzman was actually a philosophy professor. The university had only just reopened after being closed for half a century, so many of the students adopted the Shining Path's radical and extreme ideology. Throughout the early 70s, they also gained control of student councils at the universities of Huancayo and La Cantuta as well as a general presence in multiple universities in Lima, which of course is Peru's capital city. Guzman and his followers basically wanted to restore the pure ideology of Mao and use China's cultural revolution as a basis for their own Peruvian revolution. But they soon realized that recruiting members in universities wasn't working out, so they abandoned this technique. For the next decade, Guzman and his crew began recruiting supporters among the indigenous people in the countryside and in poorer urban districts. By 1980, Shining Path had over 500 members and instead of taking part in elections, which by the way in 1980 was the first time Peru had allowed elections in 12 years, they instead decided to partake in guerrilla warfare in the highlands of the Ayacucho region. Its first act of violence was burning ballot boxes but this soon escalated to bombings and assassinations. The group continued to grow in both size and territory in which it controlled a number of areas in the Andean highlands. They also started doing something called popular justice, which was essentially public trials that disregard any legal rights. There would be brutal sentences, which a lot of the time ended in public executions. Now you can see that they really are a terrorist group. Of course, public executions decided by kind of kangaroo courts were common with the likes of ISIS. It's also worth noting as well, when I spoke to people from Peru about Shining Path, 
they did say most indigenous people were kind of forced into joining China Path, so that's just worth noting. Eventually, in 1981, after much hesitation to cause panic, the government declared an emergency zone in the three Andean regions where Shinin Path were operating. The military then trained locals in these regions and supplied them with arms to fight Shining Path. They were called Rondas, but they were generally poorly equipped and obviously not properly trained. In 1983, the Rondas captured a Shining Path commander in Luca Namarca. They then took him to the town square, stoned him, set him on fire, and then shot him. Just to make sure he wasn't dead. I don't know. In retaliation, Shining Path went to the town of Luca Namarca going house by house, killing dozens of villagers, including babies, with guns, hatchets, and axes. The event was called the Lucanamarca Massacre. 69 people were killed in total, 18 of which were children. Shining Path also started executing many attacks on Peruvian cities. In Lima, they would attack infrastructure, kill civilians, and on one occasion sabotage several electrical transmission towers was in a city-wide blackout. As well as this, they were carrying out assassinations and also setting off car bombs. It's also worth noting as well that Shining Path, even then, were almost definitely involved in the production of cocaine to fund a lot of their endeavours, but we will touch more on this later. In 1990, Shining Path had over 3,000 members and continued to reign havoc, following Mao Zedong's ideology that guerrilla warfare should start in the countryside gradually choke off in the cities. However, President Alberto Fujimoro also took office in 1990 and he was not messing around when it came to Shining Path. I'm not messing around when it comes to Shining Path. He officially armed and specialist trained the Rondas, who we mentioned earlier, and sent military into the emergency zones. Initially though, the fight against Shining Path was unsuccessful. They were also seen by many as the lesser of two evils compared to the government who used excessive force, tortured individuals accused of being sympathisers, and also killed many innocent civilians in the process of defeating Shining Path. Of course, this could be compared to the War on Terror in the Middle East. In 1992, Shining Path detonated a powerful bomb on Tarata Street in Lima, which killed 25 people and injured an additional 155. Not long after this attack though, Guzman was captured along with many other Shining Path members in an apartment in Lima, and in October, he was sentenced to life imprisonment on terrorism charges. Generally, leadership and the whole Shining Path fell apart with Guzman being arrested. It was briefly overtaken by Oscar Ramirez, but he himself was arrested in 1999. Peace had returned to the Shining Path areas. That was until the early noughties, when there was a resurgence from a faction of the Shining Path which joined forces with revolutionary armed forces of Colombia. In 2002, a car bomb exploded outside the US Embassy in Lima, just before a visit by President George W. Bush. Nine people were killed and 30 were injured. This was believed to be an attack by Shining Path. Throughout the noughties and 2010s, there was an array of different attacks, all bad in their own right, but nothing on the scale of the violence under Guzman. But ultimately, the fight did continue and there was many different factions and breakaways from Shining Path. They were a serious terrorist organization. The Shining Path's terrorist activities also seriously disrupted the country's economy. So, is this the end of Shining Path? Did they just fizzle out? Well, kind of. Chapter two, where are they now? So, after their continued downfall, it was inevitable that by the 2020s, they would barely be a threat. But as mentioned just minutes ago, they would exist under different factions or splinter groups. So more recently, that splinter group is the Militarized Communist Party of Peru. So this group operated in the VRAEM area of Peru. Mi español es muy malo, así que no puedo pronunciar el nombre completo. So as well as being a part of Shining Path, they also are heavily involved in coca production. Quick side note, so in Peru, I would drink coca tea because it helps with the altitude. I didn't actually get altitude sickness that bad, but that's what it's mainly used for. Coca tea is obviously made from the coca leaf, which of course is used in the production of cocaine. You can also chew on the coca leaf or get candies like these ones here. I actually smuggled some of these candies back into the UK on accident. 
But let's not get it twisted, the coca plant is not cocaine. Well not as you know it, it it's just a plant. And it's been used for centuries by locals and indigenous, and it's mainly used for altitude and a few different things. I mean Coca-Cola used the coca leaf extra in its products from 1885 until about 1903. That's why there was always that stupid rumour in school that Coca-Cola had cocaine in. Or at least that was a rumour at my school. Cocaine is made from the coca plant, but it's also mixed with a cotton agent. Now, I don't want this video to get age restricted, although in hindsight I think it probably is going to get age restricted, but in an ideal world, I don't want it to get demonetized. Because remember, this is all educational use. So if you want to know how cocaine is made, you need to Google it, but let's just say it includes soaking the coca leaves in gasoline and drying them into bricks. This is getting age restricted 100%. Anyway, of course, the militarized Communist Party of Peru are probably not harvesting the coca leaf for tea, but instead a certain white powder. Since 2012 as well, Peru has overtaken Colombia as the world's largest cocaine producing country. Much of Peru's drug trade is controlled by the Shining Path. It's quite the jump from communist group to working alongside the cartel. When I visited Peru, I was in Cusco, and apparently there's a path there that drug mules would take, and then onwards to Bolivia, and eventually to the Western world. On the 23rd of May 2021, in San Miguel de Leni, a rural area in Santipo province, 18 people were killed by the Shining Path faction, the militarized Communist Party of Peru. Although there is a lot of reports that this could actually be drug related, flyers were found in the area. Preaching to Peru of outcasts, parasites and corrupt, as well as homosexuals, lesbians, drug addicts and thieves. That's another note as well, Shining Path had a history of violence against the LGBT community. The Shining Path and the MRTA killed up to 500 non-heterosexual people. According to one woman who was kidnapped by the Shining Path in 1981, a homosexual man's penis was cut into pieces before he was murdered. Okay, yeah, so this is getting age restricted. Shining Path's response, however, it is probable that the PCP has executed a homosexual. But rest assured that it was not done because of their sexual orientation, but because of their position against the revolution. Our view is that homosexual orientation is not an ideological matter, but one of individual preference. Finale. So, to finish it off, let's go through some final pieces of information. American rock group Rage Against the Machine released a song in 1993 called Bomb Track, which expressed support for Guzman. You can watch the music video on YouTube and it's filled with clips of The Shining Path and Guzman. Again, I'm no expert and I'm not Peruvian. I've just tried to break down information that's been available to me online. In short though, Shining Path was a cult-like group that used their beliefs as an excuse to be violent and cause destruction. They did have a few thousand members at their peak, but with Peru having over 25 million people at the time anyway, it shows how little support they actually had. They took advantage of poor communities and indigenous people who felt abandoned by their government. In many instances, they took communities by force. The government initially dealt with the situation all wrong, with the Rondas. Nowadays, Shining Path are essentially just narcos. There was and still is various communist parties in Peru also that were just far left parties. They weren't violent or had any ties to Shining Path. Shining Path, as mentioned before, is an extremist radical group and in any faction of politics, religion, or in fact any belief system, there's extremism. And in my opinion, there's nothing more dangerous. I hope you enjoyed this video. We've got a lot of different videos coming your way on various subjects, so keep updated for that. We're a small team and they do take a little bit of time to produce and edit, so just bear with us, there is more stuff coming. We're still experimenting, but if you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Stay safe, good night.